Alright, so this is going to be a video response to an old three-year-old video from Ryan Falk's ghost channel back when he was much smaller. I think 100% smaller. So I'm going to review a few points. I'll see what it goes from there start off with the claim that the state is the creation of the nation. Oh wait, for, I forgot. The video I'm responding to his name is Anarchists and Immigration and it's by Joe Falk. Right, point one. The state is the creation of the nation. This is his argument for why arguments against the state are invalid. And it's also a giant red herring. Because to say something's created by something doesn't mean that it's a good thing for that entity. Point number two. I think the state leads to irresponsibility in regards to population. So basically if something, the nation becomes overly populated, wants to dominate another nation, then can do it through that, those means. First up is a, again, polycentric law. It would probably be illegal for someone to have like 9,000 kids or something along those lines. But even in those regards, this is some weird territory for me. Seems like I don't know much shit about population theory. Well, let's move on to three. Cause choose connected to three. Because states don't exist. One nation. Oh. So because anarchists say that states shouldn't exist, one nation, in their theory, can put that population over the other. So the nation of France isn't overpopulated, but Germany is, then Germany can put its excess to France, the nation of France. And that's pretty silly. At least for me. For starters, I don't get my notes. I'm writing this shit down because this nigga's weird. Because states don't exist, one nation can put that population over the other. This isn't going to work because just because something's open border doesn't mean that someone can act under a state of population warfare. For example, if too many people are clustered in one place, then it could be a property issue. Perhaps there's too much of a certain group in the vicinity of one property. See this in buildings too. It gets unlawful for a certain number of people to be in one place, cluster. You can also see this in apartment buildings and tenant buildings as well. Where there has to be a very specific number of people in the courtyards, otherwise it's too much. So, even if there's open territory, property will clean out all the issues. Sorry, that stagnant pause, but I finally got back my groove. Okay. Then saying, saying a state is invalid is like saying a club or market's invalid. I retort. It's not the same thing. I mean, it's the same thing in principle, but theoretically, there are things that make a state more nominal, more destructive than a club or market. So, it's a very screwed up analogy. It's almost a straw man. Like, biased fundamentalism against something being a bit too inaccurate. 
then there's the China Tibet analogy that in order for China to dominate Tibet with states they would have to act under warfare but if the stations are the nations are protected by the states then it's just a population game. And this again is flawed. It could still be a military even without the states, so to say that someone can enter another population means that you either think that no one's going to defend themselves or there's just going to be guerrilla warfare that will counteract this and that's not true, there's many ways to have defense without the state and dominance of over Populated or got to the. These are the last two points. He mentions that anarchists are just bitching because their parents have them in the state, as opposed to the state, but they could just leave to another state even though there's going to be a few inconveniences, and this begs the question. The love it or leave it axiom does. Better question, but moreover, it's not just that it's inconvenient, just another thing altogether. Let me explain to you something. If you move to another country to aspire to your goals, you lose. This isn't something that a lot of people realize, but if I'm from the United States, and I try to move to Japan or England to aspire success, I lose. I fail. Why? Because unless someone's actually offering me a job right there or an opportunity for a job, if I just go looking for a job or go with my friends to haggle through jobs, I lose. You can't achieve your success to society by just randomly leaving some place. You fail. Just like so many people who move to the United States thinking that they'll find opportunity there and then they fail. Who succeeds when they just move to the United States? Either the people do it wrong the people who end up making gangs, or people who either are kids who have really high grades and their families offer to move to Jamaica to go to, I mean, move from Jamaica to go to a new school in the United States that'll definitely make them a shoe in for a good college and good job. Um, people who are given a job opportunity in another country in the United States where They'll be given a lot of money and power. Those are people who might succeed. The reason being country specific is just for the analogy. But if you just move to another nation because you think that there's no convenience, and you think that the other nation or country could be convenient, then you lose. So, just to put that out there. Then there's the final point that anarchism equals imperialism. Well, this is because both advocate a very strict non-union, uninational advocacy, according to this guy. That's pretty awkward. It's a very absurd statement. Because that's not the case. Why is that not the case? Well... We get it. Anarchists have no state value, the imperialists do have state value. But another thing is that the imperialist does small bad things, small good things. He creates absurd laws for the other nation, the other fragment of the state. 
this nation has to succumb to these laws. While the stateless, while they do have better markets, for example, they might have like better productivity, and on the contrary, more prosperity. Even though some people might suffer as a consequence of this, all the anarchists do something one step better. They try and avoid that multiculturalism in the laws, but all the nations might end up doing better because they have less of the operating state fantasy structure. Right, that's the end for me criticizing all of Ryan's points back when he was probably a high school someone who was really young. And truth be told, he's made a marginally high improvement, marginally high improvement, and this kind of shit isn't something that he'll do anymore. That's a good thing, because I'm a huge fan of him, I was a huge fan of him since 2009. When first saw him. So I'm glad he made an improvement from these 2008-2007 um, shit, these videos. Yeah, they're definitely shit. You can tell by his subscriber list. His ghost channel has like 113 subs. He has over 9,000. He's like 100 away from being 10,000. Good for him.